Many bearing devices have the same power supply. That includes the Ultra Curve Pro, the Ultra Drive Pro, the Vverb Pro, the Ultra Match Pro, and there's a bunch of other ones. The power supply is called the PSU2496 and that when a bearing device fails it is almost always that power supply that fails. And in most cases, not always, but in most cases a replacement of the capacitors will fix that power supply and that is what we're going to do. In my case it's an, an uh, Vverb Pro and I'm going to replace the capacitors. To open the unit to remove the six screws and highlighted areas then remove the cover. Inside you can see the power supply unit in the highlighted area this is where the capacitors are going to be replaced. There are several parts that are glued on. You will have to pull the cable off the, the metal plate. This should be quite easy and you have to scrape off some of the glue on the, on the two uh, cable sockets so you can pull them out. Do that and pull the sockets out. Then you see the power supply up close. You have to remove the three brackets that hold the semiconductors against the heatsink. You can pull them out with a flathead screwdriver. This particular one that you see here highlighted has a, a rubber cap over it. You might have to use a, a thin blade like a, a knife or a or an exacto knife and just slide it in there to to separate it from the heatsink if it's stuck. Then remove the four screws in the highlighted areas and you'll be able to lift the chip out. Lift it out and remove the capacitors. This image shows the chip with all the capacitors removed. When replacing capacitors there are three factors that are quite important. One is the capacitance, one is the voltage rating and one is the ripple current rating. The capacitance rating should be the same on all the replacement capacitors. The voltage rating should be equal to or greater than the capacitor that's being replaced and the ripple current rating should be as close as possible to equal to but can be up to 20% higher than the capacitor that's being replaced. And the lead spacing, the space between the, the leads that go into the chip that gets soldered on obviously must have the right spacing so that they fit on the chip and the size of, of the capacitor must not be too big so that it doesn't get in the way of other components. As long as it doesn't get in the way, it's allowed to be as big as it wants to be. Also, the temperature rating should be at least equal to, but it's always good if it's higher. A higher temperature rating gives gives it a, a greater safety margin against overheating and it'll live longer. This image represents the values of the capacitors and where they belong on the circuit board. Pause the video and take note. It is recommended not to mix and match capacitors from different brands and series. These are all Sonda capacitors, which you cannot buy, so you will have to find another supplier. Currently, there's a lot of shortages of various capacitors, so if you find one brand 
there's likely to be some or or several capacitors missing I don't know when this will change currently you can wait up to six months or even longer for other capacitors I mean missing capacitors to become available by the time they become available another one will be missing but it is somewhat important that you try and get all the capacitors marked in red from the same brand and series get all the capacitors marked in yellow from the same brand and series and the purple one which is very similar it's from from a general purpose series the only difference being that it has a higher temperature rating so if you can get all those from the same brand and series the the yellow and the purple one if the purple ones from a different one that's acceptable but make sure that all those colors are from the same brand and series all the yellow ones from the same all the red ones from the same and the purple one we need to try and do our best to find out what the ripple current is of the capacitors that we are going to replace Behringer doesn't provide us any information about their capacitor or any of their building components so the best we can do is go on the Sonda website which is the manufacturer of those capacitors that are installed in there here we are on the Sonda website looking at general purpose capacitors this is the RA series, the RB series and the RK series they have some small differences from one another the RA series has a life of 1000 hours at 105 degrees the RB series has 2000 hours of lifespan at 85 degrees and the RK series has 2000 hour lifespan at a temperature of 105 degrees the capacitors marked in yellow when we look at them we know that they have a temperature rating of 85 degrees therefore we know they are from the general purpose RB series marked here in red are the capacitors that you need a replacement for and you can see the ripple current rating for each one of them pause the video and take note if you must the large main capacitor which is marked in purple is either from the RA or the RK series we know this because it has a temperature rating of 105 degrees and those are the only two series that have that temperature rating the only difference between the RA and the RK series is the lifespan the RK has a 2000 hour lifespan the RA has only 1000 longer life is better so the RK is a better quality I had a look at both of their sheets and the, the ripple current rating of 290 marked here in red is the same for both series so that is the ripple current rating for our large main capacitor The capacitors marked in red are from the TM series and for the TM series we have these values here and I believe that those are the most likely capacitors that are installed for the mid-sized capacitors on, on this uh, circuit which is the ones marked in red those are the capacitor values on the left so we have at 16 volt we have at 470 microfarads a, a, a ripple current of 780 and on a thousand microfarads it's uh, 1305 and for the 25 volt capacitors the 470 microfarad capacitors should have a ripple current of 1120 here we are on a mouser website searching for 
the appropriate capacitors. Go to Passive Components and click on Capacitors. Click on Aluminum Electrolytic Capacitors. Click on Aluminum Electrolytic Capacitors Radial Leaded. Here you can choose the, the categories. So for the TM series, you're gonna replace them with a low impedance capacitor. Choose the value in microfarads. In this case, we have one for a thousand. You will go through the same process with all the other capacitors as well. You can go up in voltage, so we put 16 and 25 there. But you cannot go lower. Lead spacing needs to be five millimeters to make it fit. And here the ripple current, the ones that are still available at those ratings, you can go equal to or up to 20% higher. So I'm selecting all within that range. apply filters and then it'll show you only results of capacitors that meet those criteria. Twenty two results. And here are your choices. Here you can click on active and in stock to only see capacitors that are still actively being made and that are in stock available for you to purchase. I wound up buying the capacitors all on the DigiKey website because DigiKey had all the values that I needed in stock to, to have um, all the ones that are of, of the same series to, to be from the same brand and series, whereas I was unable to find those values on the Mauser side at this point. There was always one that was missing. So here's the exact list of the capacitors that I used. Here is a list of the replacement capacitors and the original capacitors. The original capacitors that are installed on a power supply are on top. They're all from Sunda. I have categorized them into the three colors based on the series that these capacitors are from. And below I have made sure that all the ones from the same series are also from the same brand and series, that they have the same lead spacing, they have the same capacitance value, the voltage is equal to or higher, the ripple current is also equal to or higher, up to 20% higher. There is only one exception on the very bottom capacitor. I went just slightly over the 20% value on the ripple current. I wasn't able to find a better match so that I would be able to get all the capacitor from the same brand and series. I think this is close enough. Then we have the temperature value. They're all equal to or greater than they were on the original. And uh, on the far right you have the lifespan and they're all equal to a greater as well. So the lifespan can be anything, the longer the better. It just really determines how long your capacitor is gonna last until it's, it's gonna die or need replacing again at some point in the future. So if you find all the other values and they're accurate, 
whatever the lifespan is, the greater the better. Once you have the right capacitors, it's time to replace them. If there has been any spill from your old capacitors due to leakage, first make sure you clean that off. Then replace all the capacitors, making sure you put all the new capacitors in the right place. And also make sure that all the polarities are facing in the right direction. Then solder on your capacitor on the other side. Perhaps you want to first put in the shorter capacitors, solder them on and then put in the taller capacitors and solder them on. Try to have the capacitor sit flush against the, the board before you solder them on. When you have soldered on your capacitors, you can clip off the excess wires that are sticking out the back. Make them about the same length that the wires of the other components are. Clean off any old thermal paste on the semiconductors. Once clean, put on new thermal paste. This will allow the heat to better dissipate onto the heatsink and prevent the semiconductors from overheating. This will extend the lifespan of this power supply. Then put the circuit board back inside the enclosure making sure that the, the thermal paste doesn't scrape off against the edge as you put it in. Put the screws back in. Put the brackets back over the semiconductors, making sure to put them on straight. Then go ahead Put the wires back on, make sure all the screws are in the right place, make sure all the brackets are on that you took off. Put the lid back on, put the six screws back on and you're done. Okay. Let's see if it works. And it works.